Marine biologist Horst Felbeck has spent a lifetime studying giant tube worms like these, which were just collected by Jason on the sea floor, more than a mile and a half down. Felbeck studies the worm's biology and how they survive in such extreme conditions. As it turns out, they don't have a stomach or a gut. Instead, they get their nutrients from microbes living inside them. In order to study those microbes, Felbeck has to remove them in the lab. He starts by cutting a small hole at the base of the worm's tube. A hole lets air inside and helps tease the worm out. Yeah, so, sometimes it works. That come out voluntarily. Yeah. See? Yeah. 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 Wow. Now he starts dissecting. So I'm, I'm cutting open the body wall first here in the middle because that's the best way to uh, get the blood off. Then I drain the blood as much as the blood as possible over a container here. Tube worms like these have two kinds of blood in them. One fills their circulatory system. The other exists around an organ called the troposome. That's what Felbeck is after. Then the rest of the body wall will be cut open. That dark red goo is the troposome. It's a spongy tissue filled with microbes. As the worm sits near a hydrothermal vent, it absorbs chemicals like hydrogen sulfide into its body. They move through its blood and pass through the wall of the troposome, then feed the microbes inside. In exchange, the microbes make nutrients for the worm. It's very runny. I cut here, what, what I'm doing here is I cut blood vessels to have the salomic blood drain out. Okay. Once the vessels are cut, Felbeck pulls out the troposome. He'll send samples to his colleagues in Germany, who will analyze the proteins made by the microbes. Together, they'll start to unravel the relationship between the worm and the tiny organisms inside it. Done. That's it? Well, that was the quick and dirty method of dissection. <laughs> 